is going on everyone? I hope you're having a great day because there is a whole lot of things happening in the market right now. The S&P 500 broke the 5,000 level for the first time ever, so that's nice. Disney actually had its best day in more than three years. And then we had ticker symbol ARM go absolutely ballistic today as it popped up by 50% and one trader literally turned 20 grand into $1.5 million dollars off of this move over the course of like three days. So we have a lot to talk about today and we're also gonna go over some setups for tomorrow. We have one day left this week, so let's make it count. And Tom, let's get right into it. Yeah, this week ended up being a huge week for the earnings. And I'll say this, it kind of surprised me. I was not expecting these stocks to have such good moves, but man, Palantir is running up and we saw ARM move by almost 50% today, at least at where it closed. Man, like that run today on ARM was something else. It had a big run last night. We talked about it a little bit then. And today when the market opened, it really rocketed up to 126 at the high this morning. So I will definitely be watching ARM for the next couple days, Mike, but these earnings, like I said, have been surprising. You know, we're seeing good continuations out of Palantir and a few of these stocks. And I'm not saying that it's overly surprising that they're continuing, but man, like some of these moves have been ginormous. And I'll say this, some of the breakouts are awesome. Like we go to Palantir on a daily chart. It's very rare to see a, a stock with like a, an extension to the upside, like it has had over the past few days. So I'm loving this earnings season so far, Mike. We have Affirm and Pinterest tonight. Tomorrow we have Pepsi, but next week will be the uh, next opportunity for most of the earnings. But man, like these moves have been uh, pretty awesome into today. And even Disney had a great one. Absolutely. Yeah. Disney had its best day in three years, which is uh, obviously a, a pretty big deal because Disney has been uh, stuck in the mud for a while now. So it's great to see a move like this one. And uh, the moves are so crazy that even market makers are getting blown out on uh, this uh, earnings week. As we uh, mentioned a couple minutes ago, some arm options went up by so much that one trader turned 20 grand into $1.5 million in just a couple days. Basically, this trader bought 500 of the ARM um, 95 strike call options that expire on February 23rd. And uh, a couple days later, ARM decided to pop up by 50% in a day. And I'm not sure what this trader is doing tonight, but I'm sure he's, uh, I, I don't even know. I, I hope he's having a steak dinner or something because this is one of the craziest trades I've seen in a while. Man, it really is. I mean, I cannot believe that I even saw this post, Mike. Like, 20 grand into 1.5 million. Like, I don't know, Mike. You better be going to Ruth Chris or something tonight. <laughs> Man, I mean, that is one hell of a gain. So it's always interesting to talk about those big gains out there, right? And I know a lot of traders today were trading ARM, especially early on in the morning. Like, we go to the one-minute chart, and, man, ARM was just straight up for, like, the first hour or so of the market being open. And a lot of people are asking themselves, like, well, hey, like, where's the opportunity tomorrow? And I'll say this. I think that there is opportunity, Mike, and I think that it's mainly coming on the breakouts obviously and we look at the high of day today up around like 124 to 126 you could say right around this 125 ish area so if we can start to really break that again I think that there's a lot of good potential to maybe catch this one up but really until we break that I don't think that there's too much more potential here but the good news is that we can go back to plenty other earnings plays throughout the week like Palantir and we saw those highs continually break morning after morning, after morning. We saw it even again this morning. So, you know, you can catch those moves. Just, you know, be patient and wait for that real volume to start to come in and catch that good high of day breakout. Exactly. And let the opportunity come to you. Don't be super desperate and try and force a setup if it's not there. When you look at a setup like ARM, the opportunity is there if the stock is, you know, just genuinely blasting to the upside. If it's pulling back or just lollygagging around, there's no reason to trade a stock that is already up so much. But like Tom said, if we see that strong breakout, if we see the same level of you know, just straight up violent upside price action like we saw today, then you could, you know, ride that uh, giant wave of buying pressure. But again, let the setup come to you. If the stock isn't blasting, then uh, there's nothing wrong with, you know, just finding a new setup. 
Yeah, exactly. And whenever I'm looking at ARM here, it's like, man, like there was a ton of volume this morning. And then we saw like, you know, it kind of uh, it slowed down a little bit, but the stock was still moving up pretty decently. And then it got that like secondary huge push up there before it started finally uh, tapering off around that 125, 126 mark. So, you know, just watch out for that volume tomorrow. If you continue to see that volume like we saw today, then I think there could be some good movement. And we saw a firm actually report tonight. They're all over the place. So I don't want you guys to see the earnings tonight and be like, hey, you know, we're going to see a firm move like ARM tomorrow. You know, it's it's a totally different setup. Um, ARM has a lot of good potential right now, kind of like uh, Palantir did earlier in the week. So, you know, tonight it looks like the earnings are not as uh, as enticing, right? Like Pinterest is even down a little bit. So we're not seeing that good upside momentum out of these two stocks. Exactly. And, you know, as we mentioned a couple minutes ago, um, like with Palantir, how that one just keeps running higher and higher and higher over the past couple of days. Uh, Disney is kind of in a similar setup right now. But in order for that setup to play out, like like Tom mentioned, we have to see that breakout. So I would keep a pretty close eye on Disney, ideally for a breakout above like 112 or so. And you just want good momentum. It's as simple as that. If the momentum's there, there's opportunity. But if the stock's pulling back, then, uh, like I said, find a new setup. I'll say this, Mike. Where's all the haters at on Disney? Come on, you know, <laughs> li light us up in the comments. Light Disney up. I'll say this, you know, uh, Disney is a very... I would say reputable stock over the longer term. If you go back on like a weekly or monthly chart and you just go back over time, this stock has done pretty well. It's had its times though where it consolidated for quite a while. And I'll say this, it was a pretty bad past couple of years for them, but it's good to see them starting to get back uh, alive a little bit. I saw they had a couple upgrades today too, which made me very hopeful for the future. So let's keep our eyes on Disney. There's a lot of momentum here. It doesn't have a very big correlation to SPY either. So I find that to be very intense. If the spy starts to fall a little bit, Disney could see maybe a pop up on a rotation. So uh, watch Disney. And I still can't believe, Mike, what do you say? The best day in three years earlier in the video. That is a pretty big feat here on a stock, especially considering three years ago we were kind of in that post COVID hype zone. Exactly. So going into tomorrow, there aren't any you know, new crazy earnings to watch out for. In terms of the economic data schedule, we're all clear, which is awesome to see. We have the SPX right around 5,000. Tom, what else do we have going on in the uh, market right now? One weird thing that I saw today is that, you know, there is a weird uh, interview going on between Tucker Carlson and Putin. So that is one thing to keep in mind. And, you know, whenever you see this, it's like, you know, there's not really anything to, that I'm looking at in the market specifically with this besides oil, right? Uh, whenever you talk about Russia, people always look at oil. And if there's just some weird news with this, it can just fuel that upside momentum on oil. And oil stocks were great today. Zalm was up 1.7%. I saw CVX was doing great today, too. It's not like they're up 10%. But, you know, whenever you see these nice intraday moves out of oil, it's generally uh, pretty awesome for short-term trading. And, Mike, I know that uh, you're looking at a few plays or at least a play on oil tomorrow. And, uh, you know, I could see it doing really well, right? We're just seeing so many tensions across the globe, even like with China and Taiwan. And then throughout the Middle East, it's like, man, like oil stocks are having a lot of pressure here in the short term. Absolutely. And I am watching ExxonMobil very closely to the upside in the short term. As you mentioned, the more tensions we have uh, increasing around the world, uh, the easier it is for oil prices to rise. And the last time oil prices uh, popped up a lot, ExxonMobil and other energy uh, companies did very well. And you can look back at the charts in 2022 to see a prime example of that. But um, anyways, looking at oil in the short term, you know, it's starting to see that uh, good uh, buying pressure flow into it. And if oil prices keep moving like they are, uh, you know, these stocks can definitely keep going higher. And I'll also say this. You better stick around to the end of today's video because uh, today's big money trade has to do uh, with an oil stock. And it's an interesting one and you won't want to miss it. But stick with us to the end. Yeah, I like it, Mike. Hopefully oil can keep up this good volatility in the short term. I'm actually pretty bullish on oil here over the next couple of months, especially off of support. I feel like the risk reward ratio is pretty good on a few of these stocks too, but I'll keep it in, in mind for tomorrow, obviously. And I saw Coinbase was actually exploding today with a ton of momentum up 8.5%. I know that we've been talking about Coinbase in a bit of a negative way lately. And 
you know, I don't, <laughs> I can see exactly why, you know, it's been falling off a lot, but on this dip, it's starting to form a pretty good support down here around 116 to 120. If we keep seeing this base continue to hold up and Coinbase has more momentum tomorrow, I think that we could see more upside potential. This stock closed fairly high on the day, right around resistance at 133. So I think that's a good breakout level. And if we break that early on, go ahead and watch for those calls and that good upside momentum. All right, sounds like a plan. Another stock I'm watching pretty closely is Rivian, also to the upside. This one had a pretty good day today, and it has been bouncing off that $15 support in a pretty good way. Basically, if it gets back to like that like $16.30 area, uh, again, with good price action and momentum, I think this one can make a move higher. The main exception to this... Uh, play is if the market starts to dump, obviously. Um, Rivian is more of a growth stock, and uh, if there's not, like, strength in the overall market, it just makes it harder for this company to rise. So, for this setup, ideally, we want the market at least somewhat strong. Man, Mike, I don't know that I've ever heard you say Rivian to the upside in my entire <laughs> life. Like, I remember just a couple years ago, remember this stock was at, uh, at what, like, it was the most what was it the the most valuable uh, automotive stock in the world wasn't it or yeah. at least damn close <laughs> like i know it was uh it was crazy but man that is uh that is one hell of a move today hopefully it can come back well tomorrow yeah, I remember back in November of 2021, right when this company came onto the market, it was trading for like $150 a share or so, and I was just laying into this stock right uh, on its first couple days of trading, and you know, it was just ridiculous at the time. It was like the world's like, I don't know if it was like the second or third most valuable car company, and at the time it had like $0 in sales, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, there's no way... <laughs> This stock is worth that much. And then it, you know, proceeded to lose like 90% of its value, which, uh, you know, hopefully I helped some people avoid uh, overpaying for this one. But yeah, it's at a point now where it's uh, seeming a little, at least a little bit more reasonable. <laughs> yeah. And the short term move is great. I mean, that was a great move today. If it can break out above that high you mentioned, I think it could uh, do pretty well. But uh, talking about pretty good highs in the short term, I'm watching AAL on resistance. I think that these airlines could start to get a nice secondary move up here. Go ahead and watch for AAL above $15 even. It's a nice whole dollar mark. So if we see that, I think we could see a good move up. And again, AAL has weak correlation to the spy. So we don't have to necessarily rely on on the overall market although it does help there we go all right well let's get right into the momentum plays for tomorrow and with the first one we have starbucks to the upside SBUX, yeah, running up well here in the short term. Go ahead and watch them for a short term break of this double top right around 96.65. If they can break there, watch for a push up to like 98 or higher. All right, with the next one, we have TLT again, Tom, uh, to the downside. The mysterious, right? <laughs> uh, if TLT falls under 93.70, just around that low of day, then go ahead and look at puts to the downside. It bounced around there a couple of times. If it actually breaks back up above 94.40, then look at calls. Sounds good. And then with the last one, we have Disney for both directions. And I know we talked about this one earlier in the video for the upside level, but in the event uh, this one uh, turns back around, what level should we watch? Yeah, so I would say like 113 to the upside, like we said earlier. If it breaks that, watch for momentum up. If it ends up breaking down under 108, then look at puts. I really like this level today. There was a few bounces in pre-market right there. And once we got that break when the market opened, the stock started really rocketing. So watch 108 to the downside. Sounds good. So we have the downside level for Disney. Of course, as we mentioned a couple times now, we have the upside level as well. Uh, don't forget about the downside level we have on TLT and then the upside level on Starbucks. These three stocks are potential trades tomorrow if they break through the levels we listed with a lot of momentum. We're looking for strong, powerful moves and continuations in that direction. If these stocks do not break the levels listed, then do not force these setups. Uh, you know, we only want to take A plus setups. So uh, if they don't break, then they don't have momentum and they're not worth trading. So keep that in mind. But Tom, it's now about that time to talk about today's $1.2 million big money trade. And we're going back to the oil stocks and more specifically ExxonMobil 
yet again. So today we saw a big money trader dump $1.2 million into the ExxonMobil 105 strike call options that expire on March 1st of 2024. Looking at ExxonMobil right now, I know we talked about this one a decent amount already, but it's trading for around $104 a share right now. The 105 strike calls are just slightly out of the money. There is a little bit of time to this trade. Um, oil prices, crude oil prices have been moving up lately. And the more that tensions rise around the world, uh, the easier it is for oil prices to rise you know, even more. So with everything being said, I think the risk reward on this setup is pretty tempting. And it's definitely a trade I will be watching very closely going forward. Um, I'm interested. Me too. It's a very interesting setup. And the thing that I really like about the setup with Zom specifically and oil is there's been a pretty big dip recently. We can see on the chart with Zom, it's been we're kind of running down into 2024 and we're starting to see some bounces off some really good supports in the short term too, like this key $100 level. Good thing that it held this in the short term. We're seeing a lot of upside momentum. And for the next few days, there's some great levels to watch like 104.50, 105. And I think that once we start to break those tomorrow, we can see some really good momentum so keep your eyes on Zom and the thing I also like Mike is we've been going with a few uh, big money plays that have been I guess a little bit longer term on the dates lately this one's only out to March 1st so it's a bit of a shorter term play and I think that's really good for the short term here and you don't need a big move short term for this to explode if Zom just gets up to like 107 to 108 that'll be awesome for these options Big time. So keep a close eye on this one going forward. Some uh, oil, uh, some other oil stocks that have moved in the past are ticker symbol OXY, ticker symbol CVX. And there's like a couple ETFs as well, like XOP and XLE. Uh, keep a close eye on all of them going forward. Uh, generally, they move together and uh, it's just a, a trade you uh, want, will want to keep a close eye on over the next couple weeks and months, especially depending how the these uh, geopolitical tensions end up developing. So keep a close eye on those. But Tom, there were so many big winners today with ARM in today in the Profits channel. We have to give a shout out to today's member of the day, Julio, who banked off ARM. Great job, Julio. Keep up the great work. You've been in the chat for a couple months now, and uh, we love to see days like this one. So awesome job to you and uh, everyone else who crushed it in the Profits channel today. Oh my gosh, Julio. I mean, we saw so many great moves today. Congrats to you, Julio. And oh my gosh, like as we scroll through here, Mike, it's like plus five grand on arm plus, you know, 1000% on arm. I'll say this guys, you know, obviously keep your risk in check in the short term, but man, guys, it's awesome to see these plays. Congrats, Julio. And Keep up the fantastic work. That is an awesome move. And if you guys are catching awesome gains out there, throw them out in the Profits channel. You might just get member of the day. Right, let's go. And then we could see SMBot had a field day with some coin call options as well as those popped up by 565%. Shopify call options with 482% gains. TSM for 469% gains. And the list goes on and on and on. So uh, come join us in the Stocked Up Trading Floor. It'll be that first link in the description in the comments down below. It's the place to be if you're into short-term trading. And uh, we have uh, some pretty exciting things brewing that'll be released in just a couple trading days. So a lot of exciting things are happening in the trading floor right now. The market is uh, breaking new all-time highs on what seems like a daily basis. We have stocks like Arm rising by 50% in a day. Disney's actually rising. Like, I don't know what's going on, Tom, but this market's really starting to heat up. It is, and it's creating so many great opportunities, and I love to see that Profits channel, guys. So keep up the great work. Uh, keep going after this good momentum in the short term. Obviously, you know, a lot of stocks are overextended in the short term, but hey, what's the saying, Mike? They go up till they don't, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those funny sayings that is kind of uh, so broad, but it's so true, though, at the same time. So uh, just keep watching this, these, uh, this good momentum in the short term, and hey, hopefully... Tomorrow we wake up and the S&P 500 index is breaking 5,000 with some fantastic momentum. There we go. Well, great job, everyone. Keep up all the great work and let's end this week on a green note.